thanks for joining me on this snowy day. I wanted to talk a little bit about my hair care routine. This should be a really short video because I don't do a whole lot with my hair as maybe some of you have noticed. Um, I'm Kathleen Moss. I'm a nutritionist and spiritual director and a cancer survivor. After about five years of monitoring uh, a mysterious tumor in my breast, I've finally been diagnosed with something called DCIS, which is a precancer of the breast. And my theory is that it was worse five years ago when we first monitored, and it's getting better. So I wanted to show you some of the things I've done over the last five years, the things that I've learned to keep my toxic burden low and to go all natural with regard to skin and hair and every other body care area in my life. Today is all about hair care. So the number one tip I have for you is to keep in good touch with something called the Skin Deep Database on the Environmental Working Group website. It's at ewg.org. And they have a database of all beauty products, all skin, hair care, every type of beauty product. And they rate them from, you know, a to Z and uh, the top rated products are the least toxic both for you and for the environment and I trust them completely and they're constantly updating it so the, the product I'm going to show you today that I use is probably already been updated and there's probably something even better so I was reluctant to show you that what I use but I'm going to anyway just as long as you know where I found it and how to find something even better so I'll start with shampoo because that's really the basic. Um, I use shampoo just a couple times a week, sometimes once a week, especially in the winter when um, my scalp is really dry. So this time of year, it's closer to once a week. And I use this, it's called EO, and the, br the brand is EO Products. It's at eoproducts.com. Um, I'll leave a link to where you can find them on my VitaCost um, linked website. It's, it's a little bit of a healthcare um, and supplement website. And it's a little bit more small scale than Amazon. I don't trust Amazon for freshness. Usually VitaCost is pretty good for freshness. So I'll leave a link just in case you're interested. But these are all scented with essential oils. There's no fragrances. So there's no parabens or phthalates involved. Um, they're just the, the simple basics that you want in a shampoo and conditioner. Um, I wanted to show you also how I moisturize my hair because like I said in the winter it can get really frizzly and dry. So besides using conditioner, I like to use coconut oil on the ends of my hair. And I just washed my hair last night and it's still pretty dry so I'm going to use, I used a tiny bit of coconut oil last night but I'm going to use a little bit more now and just show you. So I rub it on all my fingers and get it pretty well distributed. So it's not getting on any one piece of hair more than others. And I just kind of rub it through the ends and maybe the back of my head. Um, just where the ends are really because that's where it gets the driest. And it might look a little bit greasy for the first few minutes, but it soaks in and the greasiness goes away. So you don't need to worry. Um, I just used less than a pea size amount just now though, just in case you didn't notice. I just kind of rub my fingers in and got them kind of greasy. So I could do it once again and it probably won't be too much. You can also melt coconut oil down and get it into a, like, a warm liquid form. And you can do a hot oil treatment, which is, I, I do that maybe every four to six months. And that's a really good way to moisturize for long term. So that's kind of how I deal with the dryness and the the kind of frazzly ends that my hair tends to have. So it looks a little better now. The other thing I use on hair, and this is something I think I might have invented, I don't know, I've never heard of anyone else doing this, but I keep an aloe vera plant in my home, a couple different ones actually, and I always have one that's you know full bloom and able to be harvested, mostly for sunburns in the summertime, but also for other skin irritations and just skin injuries. So I've learned to use aloe vera gel from the plant. So I have a little aloe leaf here and just peel off a little section of it. And I use this for hair gel. It just 
reminded me one day when I was putting it on my skin that this is a lot like hair gel. It's just a little bit sticky. And that's this kind of um, consistency that you want in hair gel. It's not super sticky because it doesn't, you don't want to plaster your hair to other hairs. But if I need to calm some hair down that's kind of sticking up or some flyaway hairs or these hairs right here that tend to get a little bit short if you wear a lot of elastic bands, um, you can just put some aloe juice or aloe gel and it kind of calms it down without making it stick to each other like a hairspray would. So it's kind of like a mild hair gel and super natural and really good for your scalp if it does make its way down into your scalp. It's really good for your scalp too. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I, I know it's very obvious that I don't dye my hair. Um, I'm just letting it go gray naturally and it's in an awkward stage because a lot of this hair down here hasn't gone gray yet. There's just a few of them down at the bottom that are gray and almost you know over half of the top of my head is gray. So that's a little awkward when you're transitioning naturally to gray but I think it's okay. It's, it doesn't look too crazy to me. It's not like transitioning from dyeing your hair and then you have like a really stark line at the top of, of your hairline. Um, but if you do want to dye your hair and you're not comfortable letting your hair grow out or dyeing it gray while it does grow out if you've already started to go gray, then I would recommend using um, a less toxic product called Hair Print. It is a, kind of a new technology that really looks into your own DNA as its guide. And so it's actually a hair dye that goes on clear and it uses the DNA of your hair as its print, like a, like a fingerprint, to guide the colorant. So it's, it's going to make your gray hairs match your natural hairs. And you still need to do that, you know, ongoing root treatment because it does need to be applied to the hair. But it's applied in a way that's a lot less toxic. So that's the product that I know of that I recommend most to my clients that are wanting to dye their hair. Again, it's called Hair Print, and I'll definitely link information to it below. Otherwise, I just, you know, try to keep my hair out of the blazing hot sun. I put a hat on in the summer between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. so that I don't end up with bleached and dried hair. I don't drink a lot of alcohol. I just have like a half a glass of red wine max per day and that makes my hair last a little longer and get a little bit less dead on the ends I think too. And not smoking is another good thing that you can do for your hair. But your diet is really the best determinant of hair health in general and if you don't eat any fats that is going to hurt your hair. Uh, because your fat, your hair needs natural oils from the scalp in order to be healthy. So if you're doing a zero fat diet, that is definitely not good for the hair. However, um, really bad fats like industrial seed oils, which we call vegetable oils, are also really damaging for all of our body's tissues. So that's another thing that can make your hair look really bad. Um, so just switching to olive and avocado oils is a really good thing you can do for your hair as well. And as all of the other things in our bodies um, are, the hair is made very heavily of collagen. So bone broth is excellent for hair health. And if you don't like making bone broth or drinking bone broth, then a good collagen supplement is really good for hair, skin, and nails. So I will link to my favorite collagen supplement. It's tricky because hydrolyze, the hydrolyzing process with collagen can cause um, some allergic reactions in some people. And so I've really worked to find the most pure products for collagen. And it's not a well-known product and it's not one you can get in the store, unfortunately. All of the ones in the stores are hydrolyzed. So I will link to my favorite and purest non-allergenic product when it comes to collagen to add to your smoothies or anything else that you're making like a dessert or something like that it can be added. It's a tasteless powder that's all protein and it's the kind of protein that hair is made of. So those are my tips diet wise and self-care wise and application um, and upkeep. 
So be sure to leave me any questions and comments. I will open comments for this video so that you have a chance to clarify anything that I've left unclear. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.